Welcome back to Wapler Unwrapped. In this lesson we're going to learn how to make an update form to update records within the university table. In order to do that we will need two server actions. The first server action will retrieve the specific record from the table that we require and that will be linked to that ID field that we set within the bootstrap table and in the second query we'll obviously write that information back to the appropriate record um, to update it. So the first thing we need to do is create two server actions. First action we'll call uni by ID. Drag that where I want it. And what that's going to do is retrieve the record that we require by the ID that's sent to it. We need to check in globals that that get variable is in there. Now we just go straight down to steps and do our database connection. We should be getting quite familiar with that by now. Uh, we're going to use training and let's just save that. Now we've got to create the actual query itself. So back in the database actions and this is a straightforward database query. We'll call it query by ID in the query builder let's select the university table you'll see that there's a few more fields appeared within that table since uh, we last use it because these are fields that we'll be using in later videos for the moment we'll stick with what we had before which is the basic information so the conditions are the important part because the conditions is that that university ID that unique key field within the university table must be equal to that get variable and just as I normally do I'm just going to stick a quick default in there because I just make sure that I actually get some data on the screen rather than working with blank forms let's okay let's save that that's the query that will retrieve the information and populate the forms within the update form our second action will be the update action itself so again adding an action file we'll call this update uni by id straight into our steps database action and our database collection select training let's save that and now let's create the database update query so here we have add database update we'll just call it update by id hit the update options and it's our university table that we're going to be dealing with let's just get rid of those fields that we aren't going to use so we see how these fields will be linked to the post values that are sent back from the form when we hit the submit button and finally the condition that set it automatically is that that uni id that unique key field within the university table must be equal to the value that is posted back so if you think the logic of how this is going to work one query selects a particular record within a particular table um, by its unique id that information is used to populate a form we update the form we hit the submit button when we submit that that then runs the update query which takes that information back and uses that uni id that we pass back from the form as the reference for the individual record to be updated and it's normal just to hide that id within the form because we don't really need to be able to see it so most people just set that as a hidden field so let's save that now we're ready to create the actual form. Now the form we need to ensure matches the name that we gave within this. Remember, so we call it Edit Uni. So let's new file, save it straight away. Edit Uni. PHP. We're saving the admin area, and that's it saved. We'll add our frameworks, the all-important app connect, bootstrap, and we use the CDN version. Save again. 
Okay, we'll go container, row, column. And this is where we're going to put the update table. Two things we've got to do first. One is that we've got to connect to our database query and we also need a little bit of state management to be able to look after that ID that's being sent over. So query manager, we're going to define a query. It's actually picked it up. It often does because if you have the same app ID within WAPLO, it will pick it up from previous versions. So we know that that's there. We now need to create our database connection. And this database connection will retrieve the information that we need, that UniBy ID information. Don't forget, we've got to bind that to the query. So query ID, and that binds that to the uh, basically the get variable gets bound to the JavaScript equivalent, so we get the right information pulled across. Just save at that point. Now we need the actual field itself, or sorry, the form itself. And actually, this is a really easy bit. Um, I'm going to select our generator, bootstrap form generator. Our server action is going to be update by uni. I think we've got a bit of a rogue one there and uh, hopefully this will work okay. Populate from that query by ID. So we see now that we've got the link between the forms themselves and the information. We'll save that and there we are. We have a, a bootstrap table with all the information in updated. And you notice it's just defaulting to that record one that we invariably use. So what happens if we open that in the browser? Absolutely nothing for some bizarre reason. I think I must have saved this in the wrong place. I'm not quite how oh, there we are. You notice I've actually put a comma in rather than a full stop. So we just rename that. Open the browser. I'm going to close that and reopen it because it's still opening under the incorrect file name. Sorry about that. Now we can open in browser and there we are. Lo and behold, we've got the information. I'm just going to update that. I'll put um, my initials BRE at the end of that. We'll hit save. Really unexciting. Nothing happens. We don't even know whether it's saved. And that's what we're going to be doing in lesson two about how to add the messages, validation, etc. But if I just do a screen refresh, you can see that data has been updated. Take that out, hit save. So we'll just pop back into Wapland now. And let's go to university list, open browser, Arden University. And you'll see that that's pulled the appropriate record by sending us unique reference. Okay, we're nine minutes now. I'm just want to very quickly do something. I want to add a little theme to my videos and that is adding a bit of fun to the page. Clever code is always great for a programmer, but customers like a bit of glitz. So all I'm gonna do in this case is, I'm gonna add a bit of glitz to that save button. So let's go down to dynamic attributes, animation, enter animation. And when that goes in, we're just going to ask it to bounce down. We're going to allow it a minute, sorry, a second and a half to do that. And save. So now, if we go to the university list, let's go for Ayrshire College. And now we see that save button just bounces down. Doesn't actually add any cleverness to it all, but 
customers do like these sort of things because it adds a bit of glitz and I'm going to add something like that in on each screen. There is one good benefit from it. If that screen was to scroll right off the page then at least they'd see the save button drop in they'd know where it was. Anyway, talk long enough, we're over 10 minutes so uh, please come back for a part two of this where we'll do the validation etc. Uh, hope to see you soon. Goodbye.